Hi, I'm Father Chris Alar from the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about why Divine Mercy matters. In fact, Divine Mercy is important because it is not just a devotion. It is both a message and a devotion. Today we will focus on the message of Divine Mercy. The message of Divine Mercy is that God loves us, all of us, no matter how great our sins. He wants us to recognize that His mercy is greater than all of our sins combined so that we will call upon Him with trust, receive His mercy, and let it flow through us to others. The message is that God wants us to turn to Him with trust and repentance while it is still a time of mercy before He comes as the just judge. So trust in Jesus is the very essence of the message of divine mercy. Trust is so important that our lack of it has dire consequences. We know this from original sin. When we did not trust in God, but rather followed the lie of the evil one and were disobedient, which brought evil into the world. Don't you ever wonder why the world is in the chaotic state that it is? Of course you do. And the answer as to why lies in our lack of trust. Jesus told St. Faustina, mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. But what if we struggle to trust? We all have doubts and Jesus understands this. That's why he's giving us recourse in St. Faustina and even orders her to assist us. Today in this age of doubt, we can turn to her in prayer and ask her to help us trust even more. The Lord told St. Faustina, I have opened my heart as a living fountain of mercy. On the cross, the fountain of my mercy was opened wide by the lance for all souls. No one have I excluded. The graces of my mercy are drawn by means of one vessel only, and that is trust. The more a soul trusts, the more it will receive. Pope Benedict once said that the message of God's mercy is the nucleus of the gospel. So if we reject divine mercy, in essence, we reject the gospel. In fact, the message of God's mercy goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden, when God showed extreme mercy. Instead of punishment, our first parents received the promise of a savior and of a woman who would crush the serpent's head and would undo the knots that were sown that day. But what was their sin? Yeah, they ate the forbidden fruit. But that was not their only mistake. To make matters worse, they didn't ask for God's mercy. They never said they were sorry. They refused to be merciful to each other. Adam even blamed his sin on the woman God gave him. And third, they didn't completely trust God. Rather, they ran and they hid from him. Learning from this, we can see the way to exercise the message of mercy is as easy as remembering a, B, C. Ask for God's mercy, be merciful to others, and completely trust in God's mercy. Adam and Eve got themselves, and us, into a lot of trouble because they didn't know their ABCs. By exercising mercy and knowing our ABCs, we allow God's mercy to pass through us to the world. So the message the Lord gave to St. Faustina was not entirely new. Through her, he reinforced his redemptive mission to proclaim his love and mercy for all humanity, particularly sinners. What is depicted in the Bible now becomes concrete for our times. For instance, my favorite parable, the parable of the prodigal son, comes alive on Divine Mercy Sunday as the Father opens his arms to receive us back unconditionally and without punishment. Oh, how merciful is our God. Thank you again for tuning in. If you enjoyed this and would like to learn more and have access to more information on Divine Mercy and why it matters, please visit our website at divinemercymatters.org and check out the great resources we have there for you, including a specific video on this topic. And second, download the special materials I've made available for you on that site, divinemercymatters.org. May God bless you and keep you in his mercy in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.